um, correlation thinking. And, and something that you hear a lot in general talk and in sort of general culture, which is, so we see something and so it must be because of this, right? And one of the examples I used was, you know, they say that viruses replicate in your cell. And, the, and what they see is very few or none of the particles before a culture or before a person's sick. And then after the person's sick, they see a lot of these little particles. That's what they see. Therefore, it must have replicated in your tissues. In other words, I walk down the street and I don't see any little bits of paper. And I come down a week later and there's thousands of little bits of paper strewn all over this guy's yard. So I know what happened. The little bits of paper got into his house, replicated itself, and then blew up his house. And then you have all this replicated bits of paper strewn all over his yard. It makes perfect sense. And it's also complete nonsense. So th that's what happened. They say, okay, uh, well, we know that DNA controls heredity controls protein synthesis. You have one DNA, it, it has genes, separate sections. Each one codes for one RNA, which codes for one protein. That you have different DNA in every cell tissue of your body. There's, there's, this is a clear fact by the way that they find DNA. So even that bogus way they actually find it, your cheek uh, tissue has different, I know what you mean, it's easy to say cheek cells. You have cheek tissue, right? Your cheek, that's what you see. Uh, you don't know their cells until you stain them. That's different than your arms uh, tissue. DNA is different. And you only have supposedly 20,000 genes and you have 200,000 proteins. How in the heck did 20,000 genes code for 200,000 proteins if one gene codes for one protein? Anyways, we don't know. Or we make up a story that the genes get rearranged based on something called epigenetics, which is basically a story. 